Right, welcome back. Now, like I said, let's um, put this through its paces and see if it can do what it says it can do. Put on the sanded blade, so we've got there the uh, uh, 24, uh, 24 blade. The other one's a fine one with 48 teeth. Yep, 44 teeth. So um, the fine blade. First things we need to know about it is the things that are on it, how accurate are they? So the first thing I want to test is the depth. Does this depth stop come anywhere close to what it is actually saying? on this top calibration. Easiest way of doing that is just to check it. Now, we should have a 28 mil total depth. Holding it tight, you then need to just check that depth. Have we got 28, sorry, 27 mil there? Mm. Yeah, I would say that is as good as 27 mil. Right, so we know as depth is 27 mil. Well, let's do a simple. Let's just set it for say 15 mil. And we set there. 15 mil. I'll set it. It says 15 mil. Now you see that the tip is rounded. It doesn't have a point. You don't know exactly. So you assume that it sits on the top of the blade. And if you sit it on the top of the blade, you're quite a bit out. Right, it's 15 mil there. I can see the 15 mil line. It's all down to getting used to what these things are. And that's reading about 13. So we're out there. So if I now point the roundy bit at the number. Not an ideal. But you can see there. I've pointed it actually at the number. Now let's see what it is. Yeah, that will give us 15 mil. As long as we know where it wants to be for this end number, it will work for us. So, I'm going to put it there to 18 mil. What I'm believing now is 18 mil. Whether the scale says it or not. And this is 18 mil. Okay, so, right, we can work that scale. We can work that scale by learning its imperfections. Once we learn its imperfections, we get used to it and we know, right, now, we don't set it on the bottom of the line like you would expect normally. You set it on the bone nose at the tip. So that is the calibration of that is sorted. Right, the next thing that they say is that it will cut a depth of 29, of 27 mil. So I can plunge into wood, 27 mil. I want to know about that. I want to know about its plunge action. What is its plunge action like? How straight does it go? Does it do it easy? Um, let's try a bit of laminated flooring. Everybody has laminated flooring, don't they? They're always playing with laminated floorings. And the chances are, this will get used more for laminated flooring than for anything else. So let's get a bit of laminated flooring and see what it does. And at the same time, let's try this dust extractor and see how effective that is sits in there. Now, it fits on quite nicely, but it's getting something to fit that. Now, it's highly unlikely you'll just have straight onto your vacuum cleaner. Okay, so I've got some adapters here onto me shop back, and that fits into that quite nicely. Yeah, that'll be all right. Right, so all I want to do is test a plunge and cut. Vacuum,
coat is simple, coat is straight, coat is clean on this side. Of course, you're going to get chip outs because you always do with the blade on the top surface. The dust extraction on the surface was lovely, but it wasn't powerful enough to stop it going underneath. What I'll do now is turn it over and see what we get on cleanliness of cut. But the main thing on this is to see how clean the line will cut on the reverse side. That is the line there. As you can see, we started off a little bit there where we plunged, but after that, that is nice and clean. So if you was coming in from the edge, instead of plunging in, you would get it clean. The plunge bit, you're going to be coming down from the top, so you're going to be getting this result, not that result, because you're going from the top. Um, but from underneath, if you could, you'd be coming in from the end. I would imagine. What we need to know now, what's it like on its thick stuff? 27 mil? I think it could strain at that. Let's give it a try. So I've got a piece here, 36. Off with, give it a nice clean line. In fact, let's do something. Let's go 27. And I'm going to come down there 27, then I'm going to go down there 27, and we'll see just how clean a cut that does. And there we have, you can see, we've got clink up there, clink up there. We know that because it's moving. And a little bit of overcut there, but that could have been my measuring. Oh, it is, look, I've gone off line there. Um, so that's all that is. But yeah, in depth, that is 27 mil and it's completely cut it out perfectly. On that you can see that firstly we've got that the depth stop is working you've got to get used to it you need to know what the calibrations are they might all be different it's all down to when they stuck that thing on just how accurate they were when they stuck it on or when they screwed this thing into place the plunge it has no problem does it it's not draining it's not going slow um, it's reasonably easy to level out um, and it, it cuts it reasonably clean so I wouldn't have any problems with that. Remembering that you're not using this for very fine work, you're using it for just ripping through stuff. It's a punch saw to get into access where you can't normally get. You're not going to be using it in the workshop for trimming up pieces of wood. It's not for that. It's designed for plunging into a floor or plunging into stuff that you can't get to from the ends. That is the idea of the plunge. Why use it if you don't need to plunge? So, for what it's does what it needs, it's doing the job without too much trouble. Um, just a couple of criticisms I've got from it already. I've only just got it. The laser stopped working. Now, I have had a comment on that already saying there's 
packed in. Um, this is uh, well, well within its warranty. So I'll go back and I'll get another laser. I'll get it replaced. Why this is gone, I don't know. We'll find out if the next one does it, but yeah, that'll get replaced. I'll either give me another laser or they will change the saw. I think they'll probably just shove me a laser in the post. That would be the sensible, cheapest way around. Um, but we did have the laser working before and it did look good. It did give me a good straight line when cutting. If you wanted to improve on it, I would say the first thing you need to do is stick an LED in there. It's difficult to see where you're going. Um, because things are quite closed up. When you're in there, down, everything, all this body is in the way. It's very difficult to see anything. Um, so an LED in there would be nice. Laser, yeah, if it's on there, I'm already following this and it's daylight. I don't need a laser to tell me if I'm going in a straight line or not. So without the laser, I should still, we've got a very definite V groove there. I should be able to go straight on that. And I didn't. And it's not like I'm new to using power swords. Um, I didn't get one there, didn't get it there. It seems like when you're getting near the end, you lose the vision of the line. That last bit, you've lost it. And because you've lost it, you can't see where you're going and it's easy to wander off. So, <coughs> Never use the mid pens, that'll prevent that. Um, or extending your line well beyond where you want to finish. That'll prevent that as well. Um, more than that, in the shop, in a clinical condition, it's working very nice. It's doing its job. It's serving its purpose. It's worth the money. It's built nicely, good and solid. What it will be like slow speed with the diamond blading, I don't know, I ain't got any tiling jobs to do just yet. So I'd have to hold back on that for now. Um, next, I think I need to get it out on site and give it some proper work and see just how it will perform under load when I'm running down five or eight metres of flooring to get grooves in there. Um, the comment I got was that um, getting it back in the box when you're finished can be a pain. Yeah, leads on. Keep it to that sort of size. That should, I'm hoping, go back in. Like so. See if I can get it underneath that and it'll hold in better. There. If you can just get these memory things, that's a clearance. Trial and earlier. That feels better to a small size, get it underneath it, and then shove that down there. Yeah, it's more fiddly than a battery one. Oh, it's always going to be. But it's in. So for now, I'd say it's passed its test as far as, far as it does the job in here. It's going to have a purpose, sinking into flowers. It's going to do that. I can't see there's been any problems with that. It's a nice little compact tool. We'll just see how it copes out on site. And then we'll know whether or not it's going to stay in the job. There we are. Now it's had a proper test. When I finished making this video, I decided, you know, the best way to find out about a tool like this is throw it in the van, take it out on site. Let's just see what I do with it. And I did, and you know, Nearly every day I took it out of the van and used it. I've ripped up floors, I've ripped up worktops, mainly floors. It's unbelievable. I need to cut a channel in a floor. I pick that up, it just, it does it. Before, I was using many tools and I was struggling somewhat. This really comes into its own when you want to get through floors. I'll probably find more uses as time goes on, but for now, that alone makes that well worth its money and it's probably going to live in the van now not in the workshop because i need it can't be bad can it anyway that's it a flying success right well once again thanks again for watching if you haven't subscribed please do so and give us one of them thumbs up won't you just so everybody else knows it's a reasonably fair video um and i'll catch you again in the next one all right thanks for watching bye for now